getting started on the ailerons now. And the first thing I did was figure out the spar size that would fit properly on this tail rib. So I did that with some trial and error and a little bit of measuring. And I did some test bends to figure out who fit best. <clears throat> and I've come up with the dimensions I'm going to use. So the next thing I did is blanked out a couple sheets of 32 thousandths for the spar in the right width. And I'm going to prep that and bend it. So I removed all the scratches and prepped the surface for paint or I can prime it later. So the two spar blanks for the uh, aileron are ready to go. Um, so now I will lay out the bend marks, put some contact paper on them and bend them. So I just got this far out of the bender, put a few ribs in here to check the fit. Fits pretty good. I'm happy with it, so I will bend the other spar now. So with the two spars bent to shape, I'm going to start laying out the locations for all the holes and the ribs and all that. So the first thing I did is these two have been put back to back, so these are both three degree angles here and these are the 12 degree angles. Then I marked them out so I don't mess it up that this is the top right and this is the root and this is the top left and this is the root. So looking at the plans the first hinge is 12 inches in the center line of the hinge so that's pretty simple that's a rule. I'll just mark that. My triangle that I printed and, and used on the other spar was a little too big so I cut the end off it. So it fits in here real nice and I can just draw a nice straight line. And there's the center line marked. And I'll do the same thing and just go from one end to the other end and lay out everything. So there are the two spars. Everything's been laid out. Rib location, rib directions, holes hinges. So the next thing I'm going to do is drill all the lightning holes. So I'm going to drill the lightning holes in this aileron now. So this is my setup with a circle cutter. A nice piece of sacrificial wood here. And then I just uh, line it up on the tool. Got a couple blocks of wood here to clamp down flatten out the material and also keep it from wanting to move anywhere. Searching through my box of scrap here, um, the spars, let's finish the light weighting holes. So the next thing I'm going to do is start attaching ribs. I need some attach angles. And these attach angles are small, they're three and a half inches or so, well, a little less than that, um, which is smaller than the flap, smaller than the main spars. So I can utilize some of this scrap that uh, before wasn't big enough.
So I've made up the doubler plates for the hinge area and they've been drilled, deburred, prepped for paint, primer. Um, and I drilled these first because they're 63 thousandths thick and so it's always better to work through the thick material into the thin material. If you do it the other way around it takes quite a while to drill the hole and it tends to wallow out the thinner material. So if you, were drill, if you drilled the spar first and then drilled it into the plate you'd probably end up with a little more oblong hole in the spar than if you go through the thick plate. So anyhow, marked out half inch in from each side. I already have my layout lines for where this goes and all I'm going to do is center this up and then just make a small mark here to transfer where center is and then I can take my square and lay it in here and transfer that mark and the only purpose for this is so that I can I'll now be have marks on the edge so that when I lay this in here and clamp it down I can see where it's supposed to be so now I'll just clamp that in place So now with these plates all put in, I can take them out, label them, and put them aside. So now I'm going to uh, just put the rivet locations on the ribs that uh, don't have support plates. So uh, got my square here. I had some tape to the side so I can put some new marks on it. And I will just transfer those. Now I'll center punch those and drill them. So I'm going to attach the nose rib. Um, so this is the bottom, this is the top. That's the tip, so flange is generally going towards the tip. First thing I'm going to do is put a piece of heavy sheet metal on here. It's a guide. And I'm going to bring this rib back. I've taken and drawn a mark down the center of the rib. Bring it in place until I can see that mark, which I can see right there. Fiddle with it for a while. And then clamp it down. and I can drill it. Once I clean that one, I don't need this. And I'm going to readjust it a little bit to get that top one where I want it. And then I'll drill it. Turn it over. So all the nose ribs are on. I'm putting, starting to put these angles on for the tail rib. So all I do is I mark this angle on the side that I didn't pre-drill halfway. Get rid of this rib. Then I can just line it up on the line that already exists there that I did the other holes on and then clamp it in place. Now I'm going to check square on that because well, I can see I'm off right now anyhow. You can get some uh, accumulated error between all your measurements. But I've got a good reference mark. 
So I'll find angstrom this way. So now I can flip it over and drill the attachment angle. So here's the rib. And if I take one out, that angle will stay in place. I can put that in. And that one in. That's it. So now I'm at the point where both ailerons have their tail rib attachment angles on and their nose ribs clean coated in place. So the next step will be to clamp this down to the table and put the tail ribs on. So now I'm going to attach the, the rear uh, ribs to the spar. So in order to do that, I want to lay it down on a nice flat table. I checked and verified this is flat. Um, I've drawn a line down it. And this is what I'm going to line the spar up on and, and pin it to the table. I already checked this end to make sure this line was square to the uh, the edge over here because I'm going to use that to set the first rib. So I just put it to the edge, get a nice piece of wood here for a hold down. And then come down and do the middle. Um, if you have any bow in the spar, you can take it out. While it would be nice not to have any, I have a little. So now it's clamped down that line and it's straight. I can start putting the ribs in. I'm going to start in the middle because it's a lot easier to drill off the ends than it is to drill in between them and work my way out and each one of those I will make perpendicular and pin it to the table too. Alright so I'm going to put this rib in. So all I do is put it in place here on the angle. Come back here with a square. Find out where square is. Mark the tail here on my table and then I'm going to come in here with the piece of wood and pin this down. And now I can uh, drill it. A nice long drill bit you can get to some interesting places. Like that one because these holes all are in a line because I did them outside of the plane so now I have two ailerons with all the ribs clicking in place so I'm getting started on the counterbalance for the aileron um, my counterbalance will be made out of a piece of half inch pipe and filled with lead and epoxy the uh, Plans call for an aluminum tube. We're trying to add weight, so using a steel pipe is going to just add some weight. Use a little less lube, uh, a little less uh, lead, and a little less epoxy. So I've done the calculations. The pipe comes out a little over two pounds. Should be able to get about four pounds of lead in there with the epoxy. So come out right around the six pound mark, which is should be fine. Uh, always, if I ever needed more weight, I could put it out in these outer sections that aren't going to have a weight in them. So anyhow, first thing I'm going to do is cut this pipe oversized. We'll cut it long because I'm going to fill it with lead and epoxy and then I'll trim it off on the lathe to get it the right exact length that I want for the uh, aileron. So I've cleaned up the pipe so that I can paint and prime it. But before I do that, I'm going to um, 
fill it and cut it to length. And thinking about this, if I were to do this again, I would probably not even epoxy the lead in there. I'd put a pipe cap on this to thread it in, fill it with lead shot, heat it up till the lead melted, and keep adding shot till you got it to the end. You'd end up pretty heavy, but uh, you'd save $30 worth of epoxy. So this is my setup for pouring. So I covered the end and then I taped around the outside nice and tight so that this won't leak and that'll be the, the side that'll be down. On the top I just take a soda bottle, it'll slide over the pipe and then again you just need to tape it. Alright, so now I've got a nice funnel on this end and it's capped on that end. So I'll just take this pipe and clamp it in this vise. I've got some cardboard underneath the, down there in case it leaks a little. And I've got a nice funnel to put everything in. I'll go get all the supplies. Alright, so I've got uh, some epoxy mixed up here. And I'm going to put in some to make a slug at the very end of the pipe. Then I'm going to start putting in lead, and then epoxy, and then lead, and then epoxy, and back and forth. So using this highly scientific scale, you can see where we came in on weight. If I can get it to stay there. Just short of six pounds. So what I'm doing now is on these ribs, I got this hole really close to the edge but not really close enough that when you put a rivet in here to, hold to the counterweight you won't pull the material in. So what I did is I took the form block that I made these ribs with and I cut the tip off and then I can take and clamp it to the table My four block makes a great holder for that and I can take a step drill and just work it over to the edge at the top and the bottom. Anyhow, when it comes out really good so that that weight can be riveted to this flange and this flange and not try to pull them in. So I'm working on the nose skins and uh, I blanked out the two smaller ones for the ends. So basically it goes right here. I measured across at the spar what the width was, top and bottom. They were about the same. And then cut my sheet. Um, I did try to make the sheet a little bit short so that we can use a little bit of this radius when we cover it and not have a sharp edge. But uh, anyhow, I'll put my bend line on here and now I'll set up and bend these. So I prepare the sheets before I bend them. So this sheet's all been prepared for primer. Mark the bend mark. I've covered it with some contact paper so I don't mar it up. And then I'm just going to put it under this three quarter inch bar that I've set up. It seems to work pretty good to get that radius in the front. So there's my setup ready to bend. So basically the clamp is holding the, the uh, three quarter inch bar in place. And 
I've just lined this up on the edge of the bar. This will get me up close to 60 degrees. In order to get some more bend, uh, what I've done now is just put the bar on top of the previous bend and just put a stop here so the bar can't push this direction. And then I'm just going to take the bender up again and I'll be able to roll over the bar further. I've also moved the bar back from the actual bend area, which was as simple as just raising this all the way up as far as it could go and then pulling the bar up against there and that's what gave me that position. So anyhow, this will get me another all to about 90 degrees. That makes a pretty nice bend for the nose. So to install this nose skin, I'm going to put a couple Clicos in the bottom and then I'm going to flip the whole frame upside down and screw it down to the table so it's flat and square and then I'll do the top. So these Clicos will hang over the edge of the table. And to do these I just, you know, get the reveal I want that's equal to the back and I'm shooting for a very slight reveal on the, on the rib radius. Like I said, to make the covering easier. So now with the aileron turned over, I'm going to work on bringing this nose skin down. First thing I'm going to do is clamp this thing to the table. And as you can look under here, you'll see I have a series of parallel lines that I've used at different times. So I'm just going to take this one here that I can use and leave these clamps out over the edge and clamp it down to that line and then uh, clamp all the ribs down so it's all flat and then I'll work the nose over. With the uh, aileron frame all attached to the table, I'm going to come through here and mark these rivet locations first thing. <clears throat> Then I'm going to just bring the sheet down and transfer those over to the top. All right, now that I got those marks, I'm going to pull the skin over and clamp it the best I can, just snug. A couple small clamps. And then with it just snug, I'll I'll move it any right to left it might need to line up properly on the top of the nose ribs. And I'm going to try to give it a good push backwards and clamp it down so it'll follow this contour as best as possible. So now I'll just bring these marks up to the top, line them out at a quarter inch in, and I'll start drilling Coleco in this from the bottom. <laughs> 